Hello everybody, Calamity here, and hope you guys are having fun with the brand new update. Today's guide is going to cover everything you need to know about Layla. This is a character that you're going to be receiving for free during the event, so I figured now is as good a time as any to make a guide on everything you need to know about our favorite CP Scholar. So really quickly, I'm going to go over how to get her in the event if you're not quite sure or if you're starting the event late. Uh, basically, you need to complete part two of the story quest. Uh, there is a quick start feature Feature, just like previous events before if you're not caught up with the story yet that's fine you can just dive right in and you only need to get up to part two because that will unlock the attractions on the bottom here and the attractions are just like any big event in Genshin you're gonna need to spend some time playing some uh, mini games here and there and you're gonna get this currency right here called the fascinating Fenochrist I don't know how to say that when you accumulate 1200 of this event currency you will be given one free Layla now, if you already own the character, then you're just going to get a free constellation. Now that we covered how to get the actual character uh, herself, uh, this guide is going to go over everything you need to know about building Layla properly as a shield support character. We're going to go over her entire kit, including all of her talents, her passives, and all of that. We're going to go over weapon options, artifact setups, constellations, team setups, and of course we're going to do a little bit of a showcase towards the end. And we have a lot to cover for Layla, so let's get started with the talents. Okay, first and foremost we have the normal attack talent called Sword of the Radiant Path. This is a very normal standard attack talent, just same as you've seen as uh, all the other characters that use swords. And Layla is no different, as we can see, no special mechanics for it. So let's just move on to what makes Layla unique. Her elemental skill, which is called Knights of the Formal Focus. This is where Layla gives your team a, a shield. It's called the Curtain of Slumber. Now, if we quickly just kind of like look at all this text, you're gonna see like, whoa, that was a lot of text. It's kind of shorten this up for you a bit here. So basically the shield is going to absorb cryo with more effectiveness because Layla is a cryo unit, therefore her shield is cryo. And she's briefly gonna apply cryo to herself. Uh, so just be careful if you do come into contact with Hydro, you could freeze for a bit. Now this second part, her shield is a bit different compared to other shielders like Diona or Zhongli. And she has something called the Night Stars and the Shooting Stars. So when you activate her shield, you're going to see on the shield itself that as you use elemental skills as time passes and even from her burst, it's going to get stars are going to start lighting up on your shield. When you get four of these stars, these are what turn into the shooting stars and they will literally shoot at your enemy uh, applying cryo damage. So this is a great way for Layla to not only give a shield to your characters, but also apply cryo herself, making her a really good choice for any sort of elemental reaction uh, that you need cryo for. And it says right at the bottom here that you cannot start uh, accumulating night stars once again until all of the night stars fire off. So you need to build up four, and then once you obtain four, they will slowly shoot one by one at nearby enemies. Then you can start building up four again. So if we look at the skill attributes, we can see that the skill itself does do a tiny bit of cryo damage uh, when you use it, and mine is at level 8. Um, shooting star damage also pretty low, and the base shield absorption is actually pretty good. This is a pretty solid shield. Again, mine is only level 8, so you can get this much higher, not to mention constellations uh, can make this much, much more uh, of a tankier shield. The shield lasts for 12 seconds, and the cooldown is also 12 seconds. So. In theory, if your shield doesn't break uh, during the shield duration, then you basically have an infinite shield, but that's not always going to be the case, depending what you're fighting. Also, one thing to note that is not mentioned here is that Layla's shooting stars can generate energy particles for your team. Uh, these will be cryo particles, of course, so she can actually be a pretty good battery if you are using her with any sort of cryo unit, including Eula herself. Or if you're using her with Ayaka for a sort of freeze team, uh, Layla is can be a good battery for your team. And honestly, when it comes to upgrading Layla's talents, this is going to be the most important one. Since, again, we are building her as a shield support, this is the only skill or this is the only part of her kit where she actually gives us a shield. So you don't have to invest in like your normal attack talent. Uh, you can feel free to invest in the burst as well just to improve her damage a bit but speaking of the burst we have the dream of the star stream shaker this is going to create what's called a celestial dream sphere that constantly fires starlight slugs 
at opponents within its AoE dealing cryo damage. This is very similar to her, what her shield does, where it shoots off those shooting uh, the shooting stars, uh, but these are separate. You'll be shooting these starlight slugs, they do cryo damage, however, this burst also will generate night stars for your shield. So if your shield is up, while this burst is also active, the shield's also going to accumulate extra night stars, which means, hey, more cryo application for you. Um, as well as possibly more energy particles when they hit. If we quickly look at the scale attributes, we can see that the damage is scaled off Layla's HP. Uh, it has a duration of 12 seconds, cooldown of 12 seconds, and an energy cost of 40, which is actually really, really nice. Feels like forever since we've seen a, a burst so cheap. Bursts these days are always costing 70 or 80. This makes Layla's energy recharge needs very, very lower, <laughs> very low, excuse me, compared to other characters. And yeah, when you're playing Layla, you always want to use the burst first, and then apply your shield just so that your dream, uh, your dream sphere can start firing those slugs, and then you can start building night uh, stars as soon as possible. Now let's move on to her ascension talents. The first one's gonna be called Like Nascent Light. Uh, basically, this talent is going to increase your shield strength by up to 24% as you accumulate night stars. So you only need to accumulate four, which is very very easy to do with Layla and you will obtain 24% increased shield strength, which is very nice. Let's move on to the next one, which is called Sweet Slumber Undisturbed. This is going to make your uh, elemental skill, the shooting stars, deal an additional damage based off 1.5% of Layla's max HP. Again, this is going to, this sounds like really nice on paper, but it's, it's a, it's a small-ish increase in damage. It's not going to be like, whoa, Layla's now a DPS, but it's, it's a welcome damage increase. And finally, we have Shadowy Dream Signs, which is going to give you a 10% chance to receive double the product when you're crafting character talents. This is a nice talent, of course, if you're, you know, when you're crafting talents, when it actually goes off. Hey, if you can get it, if you get it to proc, it's great value. All right, next up, we're going to talk about weapons for Layla. And right off the bat, I'm going to recommend this for everybody. Uh, Favonius Sword is one of the best things you can give to Layla. First off, it gives you energy recharge as a substat, and because we just saw that Layla's burst is only 40, this sword honestly covers your energy recharge needs by itself. Like, you don't even need to go hard on energy recharge for your artifacts. So you can just give her this, and then when you're building her artifacts, you're going to need to, of course, get some crit rate so that the weapons affect uh, procs regularly. For those that don't know what the Favonius sword does, let's go over it real fast. So when you crit, you're going to generate a small amount of extra ele uh, elemental particles that regenerate 6 energy for the character, and this can occur once every 12 seconds. So this is basically turning your Layla into a battery, not just for herself, but for her entire team, because these extra elemental particles are energy effective on any character's element. So this is a really, really good weapon to give Layla. Especially as a support character, this just gives her more utility to her team, therefore adding more value. Now, let's say, you know, Panda, hey, I don't have a Favonia sword I just started playing, or I don't really have that many swords in general. Is there anything else I can use? Uh, sure, you do actually have a couple other options, and the other one I'm going to recommend to you is a Sacrificial Sword for a 4-star option, because it also has the subset of Energy Recharge. However, the elemental skill is not useful for Layla because it you don't need to refresh your shield like instantly after using it. It could come in handy when you're facing enemies that are, you know, breaking your shield uh, really fast, but in most cases, you know, the Favonia sword is going to be much much better for you. Now, if you're looking for three star options, there's not too many. Um, you could give her a Harbinger of Dawn. Uh, this is a weapon that gives crit damage as a substat, and when your HP is above 90%, it will also increase your crit rate. This is only a recommended weapon for those that want to build Layla for damage. So I can't really recommend it too much, but it is a 3-star weapon, so many will probably have access to it. Now, if you are looking for 5-star options, let's say you are you know, more on the spending side of things, a Primordial Jade Cutter is going to be a very solid option here. Not just for the damage alone, because it gives you a nice 44.1% crit rate. It also gives you 20% additional HP, which is going to be great for shields, as well as give you an extra attack buff based off your max HP. So this is going to increase Night Star and the Starlight Slug damage. 
And finally, another weapon I can recommend but I don't have is going to be a Key of the Kajnizut. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but this is Nilo's signature weapon. If for some reason you were pulling on a weapon banner that had it and you just have one sitting in your inventory, this could be a really, really good weapon for your Layla, simply because it gives you a ton of HP percentage as the substat and from the weapon's effect. And not only that, it'll convert your HP into extra elemental mastery. So if you do plan on using Layla for some sort of trigger, uh, comp or like you know obviously we, we're gonna have to go for reverse melt as a cryo unit right so if you're trying to go for something like that that weapon's gonna be great for that as well and one more weapon i can try to recommend is a ziphos moonlight it does have elemental mastery as a substat however it will convert that elemental mastery into energy recharge not just for layla but for her entire team giving her yet another very useful team-wide buff so it's up to you which uh, four star, three star, or even five star weapon you want to give Layla. But at the end of the day, I still am going to 100% recommend a Favonia sword. Next up, we have artifact choices for your Layla. And as you can see, mine is equipped with the Tenacity of the Millilith set. This is a set that you can get as early as Mondstadt because it's in the Dragon Spine area. And I highly recommend this set because on the two piece effect, it gives a 20% HP increase, which is great. And the four piece effect is going to give a team wide buff that's going to increase your attack percentage of all party members by 20 and increase your shield strength by 30%. Now remember, Layla has a passive talent that increases her shield strength by 24. So yeah, you can basically buff your shield up to 54% shield strength uh, with both of these buffs active at the same time. And Layla is perfect for this set once again because of her night stars and her starlight slugs as long as those are hitting enemies this buff is going to be active pretty much all the time so yeah, this is the number one artifact set i recommend for layla if for whatever reason you don't want the tenacity to the millilith set keep in mind that this set does not like stack if you have another teammate uh, using this set as well it's not gonna like give you 40 percent attack and 60 percent shield shrink that would be pretty broken um, other options I can recommend, however, are going to be the good old Noblesse Oblige. This is going to give you a just a team-wide buff of 20% for your teammates uh, for 12 seconds. Again, this also does not stack, so if no one on the team has it, Layla could be a good option uh, for it because she does have a really cheap elemental burst. Now, let's say you don't want either the Tenacity of the Millilith or the uh, Noblesse Oblige, and you're wondering, okay, what, what else can I give her? Well, you can keep the two-piece effect from the Tenacity of the Millilith, and then you can hike it over to Sumeru and get yourself two pieces of the Vorukasha's Glow. This is just basically going to give your Layla the tankiest shield you can get because you're going to increase your HP by a whopping 40%, since that's exactly what this set will give us on the two-piece effect. So you have your options set out there for you if you want your Eula, or uh, sorry, your uh, Layla to give your team a utility buff. Uh, pick, pick the one that uh, suits your needs. Um, but again, Tenacity of the Millith is really her best option. Now that you've decided on your artifact set of choice, what are the substats we're looking for on the artifacts themselves? So for Layla, you're going to want to find as much HP percentage as possible on every single stat, whether it be a subset or a main stat. Um, flat HP is also going to be really good. Now for energy recharge, this is dependent on what weapon you gave your Layla. Again, if you, or if you gave her the Favonia sword or the Sacrificial sword or any other weapon that has an energy recharge substat, chances are you actually don't have to give you know, that much um, energy recharge to your Layla, it'll be nice to have, but again, she has a really cheap elemental burst, so you don't have to invest as hard. Um, the other stat that I also recommend is crit rate. Again, this is only if you are giving her a Favonius sword, since the crit rate will help proc the weapons effect more consistently. But other than that, once you have your HP percentage um, on your artifacts, honestly, it's whatever offensive stats you can get at that point. You can give her attack percentage, you can give her flat attack, crit rate, crit damage, elemental mastery. If you're planning to use her on some sort of reverse melt team can be good for her. Um, all of these offensive stats can be good 
because at this point, you know, like you can only get so much HP off of one artifact, so you know, you might as well fill up the rest of your substats with something that'll boost her damage at that point. Now for the sands, you do have an alternate option if you are struggling for some energy recharge because you gave her a different weapon, then you can go for an energy recharge sands uh, to help balance out your stats. For the goblet, just HP percentage. Again, we're just building her as a shield support. All we need is HP percentage. For the circlet, if you were having trouble getting crit rate on your substats, uh, I was fortunate to fortunate enough to get some good crit rate on my substats, so I didn't need one, but you can opt in to go for a crit rate main stat circlet to help you with that Favonia sword. Uh, if you don't need the crit rate, then you can just go HP percentage main stat. Now let's talk about constellations for Layla. So depending on, you know, if you've had Layla, if you've pulled her before, you might already have some of these or the event is going to give you a constellation of Layla if you already have her. So let's go over what they do. C1 is pretty straightforward. It's just going to make Layla's shield have 20% increased shield strength. That is perfect. Now this longer paragraph here just basically makes your Layla give a mini shield to nearby party members. This is only good if you play in co-op. So Layla becomes basically a shield factory and you just get, everyone gets a shield when you're playing with Layla with C1. Next up we have C2 which is called Light's Remit. If you thought Layla's energy recharge needs were low enough, they just got lower. C2 makes it so that every time your Night Stars hit an opponent, you will restore one energy to Layla and each shooting star can restore energy to her in this manner once. So you shoot off four stars, you get four energy. Most Layla rotations, depending on what team you're using on, it, it's not hard, it's not crazy to say like you'll get eight to maybe twelve even uh night stars to hit your opponents so this is going to give your layla basically much much more energy further reducing those energy recharge requirements c3 and c5 are going to increase layla's uh shield and burst respectively this is perfect for us because you know for c3 that just means tank your shield for C5, it's going to increase the damage of her burst. C4 gives Eula, or I keep calling her Eula. C4 gives Layla uh, a utility buff for her team, although it's kind of a limited one. Uh, when your shield starts to fire off those shooting stars, you're going to gain the Dawn Star effect. This effect basically increases your normal and charge attack damage uh, based off of 5% of Layla's max HP. While this sounds amazing on paper, keep in mind if you keep reading, Dawn Star will only last up to 3 seconds and will be removed after 0.05 seconds when you deal any normal or charge attack damage. So it's only going to buff one attack every time you shoot off 4 stars. So at first it sounded it started sounding really good, but for whatever reason, Hoyoverse said, hey, this might be too strong, let's put a limit on it. So unfortunately... This constellation could have been much, much better, but, you know, it's it's very limited. So you'll see, like, a spike in damage uh, in the middle of combat when you're using Layla. And finally, we have C6, which is going to increase the damage of both your Night Stars and Starlight Slugs by 40%. Additionally, you're going to naturally gain Night Stars on your shield at a 20% faster interval. So this is... Just means more night stars for your Layla, which means it's easier to build that four uh, four night star cap, which means more energy, particle regeneration, possibly more cryo application, and as we saw, it's going to synergize with her C2, so that also means more energy for Layla herself. So this is going to be a really good constellation for her, as well as of course the damage increase for skill and burst being welcome. Now let's talk about teams that you can use uh, Layla in. And I'm actually going to do my team setup section here a little bit differently because Layla is a shielder and a lot of teams in this game could definitely benefit from having a shielder. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Just give me one sec here. Alright, so this is our first example. This is not a team, okay? I know some of you guys just probably went, whoa, 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 what is this? Uh, this is not a team I'm recommending for Layla. This is an example. Layla can work in a team comp that uses Hu Tao, Yoimiya, or Diluc, or honestly any fire DPS, there's only four slots here, uh, 
as your main DPS, and Layla will work with them as your shielders. So for Hu Tao, one of her best teams is to use Jing Cho, Yulan, and Zhang Li. Well, if you don't have Zhang Li, then your next best option is going to be Layla. And honestly, with Layla and her cryo application, sometimes you might even melt off her damage. And if you do have that C4 uh, on Layla, she can help your Hu Tao's uh, damage, especially on those charge attacks. Yoimiya is also here. Same, They basically have the same comp as Hu Tao, uh, more or less, and she's going to work great with Layla. That shield's going to be perfect. It synergizes well with Yoimiya's combos. Deluke, same thing if you're using him in a melt team. Let's use another example. Now, Layla can also be used in a freeze team, right? She does plenty of cryo application, and the shield uh, is going to make her a nice fit for your main cryo DPS to do their job with ease. She can be used in a mono cryo team as well with something with, you know, with Shenha. Shenha is also going to be able to boost that damage from your Starlight Slugs as well as your Night Stars very significantly because of Shenha, the way that Shenha's buff works. Um, but yeah, she's a great fit for Ganyu, great fit for Ayaka. Now you can also use Kakomi or Barbara in your freeze teams, whoever, or even Ayato, whoever is the Hydro uh, applicator to, to get those constant freezes. Next up, as I mentioned before, Layla is also going to be good for physical damage teams, including Eula, everyone's favorite physical DPS queen. Mine's only level 1 because I just pulled her on the banner, so I haven't had any time to build her properly. But yeah, Layla can provide a shield for Eula so that she can freely do her combo, and she will be able to work with any sort of electro applicator like Fischl, and you're basically going to have superconducts for days. Jinya is also here for that physical DPS stuff and, and Razor if you don't have Eula. And finally, a team that I can also recommend for Layla is the ever popular, ever standard, the very own international team with Layla's variant. So instead of having Chong Yun here, you can have Layla to provide a shield for your team, which is nice safety, you know, comfort for everyone. She's also going to be playing her cryo a bunch so that's possible to get some freezes some melts in there uh, and not to mention if she is using that favonia sword she's going to help funnel even more energy for your jean ling to consistently burst off cooldown so she's a good addition if you don't have your chong yun built um, and you kind of want to run a team like this Layla's going to be perfect for that all right welcome to the combat showcase for Layla. although it's not going to be much of a combat showcase for her it's really hard to demonstrate a shield character because, well, she doesn't really take up a lot of field time. As I mentioned before, you just pop her burst, then pop her skill, and then everyone else kind of does their thing. But nonetheless, we'll show you what she looks like in combat so you can see the Night Stars in action as well as the Starlight Slugs. And we are running the basic, I tried to keep it with as many 4 stars as I could, so we're running a very basic international team with John Ling, Jing Cho, and Bennett. Now keep in mind you don't have to run this exact version of this team if you don't want to. You could also replace Xing Cho with Sucrose for better grouping or Kazuha if you have him. Um, things like that will also be good additions for this team. But with that being said, let's get started. Pop the burst, then the skill. Then we get to have everyone do their skills and bursts as well. Honestly, we probably could have used Bennett's burst first, so that Layla's um, burst and skill could have gone the damage as well. Alright, we're going to... Basically, everyone's burst is ready to go again, so we're just going to repeat the rotation. I was waiting for everyone's uh, burst to come off cooldown. I also didn't pop that burst on Bennett's... Uh, first, but that's okay. Like, I do kind of wish that the event had stronger monsters because you know we're not we're not really taking any damage from these guys. They're just the very basic uh, weak monsters that you fight all the time. We do have some Electro Mages here, but thanks to the event's effect, they're pretty much down and out pretty quickly. Hopefully you can see that the stars accumulate really, really fast on the shield. 
because we're spamming elemental skills. And Layla basically always has her ult ready to go every rotation. So she is always ready to apply that cryo. Give us that extra cryo application with shields ready to go. No one's needed to get healed from Bennett's ult this entire time. And we're pretty much going to wrap it up here. Alright, before we end this video, I just want to say some final words on Layla. Now you also might be wondering, you know, Panda, you've been talking about this character for almost 30 minutes straight and giving her the good praises. How come she's not as popular or as good as you're making her out to be? And all that's because Layla came out almost two years later after Zhongli, the King of Shields, had already had up to two or even three reruns at that point. So everyone basically that was playing at the time already had their Zhongli pulled for and built properly. Not only that, we've also had different shielders as well come out over the course of the game. Like we've had Diona, who isn't a very strong shielder, but she is she does have the ability to both heal and provide shields for her team. We also have Toma, who also has a pretty decent shield. So by the time Layla came out, everyone already had basically a shielder built and didn't really find the need uh, for Layla, which is unfortunate because she is a good character. And I think she's going to benefit a lot of the newer players, of course, because a lot of you I've seen in the comments say stuff like, hey, I don't have Zhongli. And, and you know, when you're watching my other guides and you say, hey, you should use a shielder. I don't have Zhongli. I don't have this character. Um, well, since you're getting a shielder for free, you get Layla. She does have a really strong shield. It's stronger than Diona's, and I believe it's stronger than Toma's. Um, and even though it's not as strong as Zhang Li's, she does have the benefit of being Cryo, which means she can help you set up elemental reactions that Zhang Li could not. It also means that when it comes to team building, she can give your team the Cryo Resonance bonus if you have another Cryo, giving your team a free crit rate boost. But regardless, at the end of the day, Layla's shield is going to help you get through, honestly, 80 to even 90% of the game's content. What I mean is basically exploration. The only time you're probably going to see this shield break or, you know, have trouble keeping the shield alive is when you're fighting something very difficult like a weekly boss. You know, a lot of weekly bosses have attacks that aren't meant to be shielded. You're supposed to dodge them or run away or do the gimmick of canceling that attack for Scaramouche's fight, for example. So it's not going to save you from everything. And, and again, at like in Spiral Abyss, it's going to be really hard to keep up that shield. And that's also probably one of Layla's downsides is if you are fighting monsters that do break the shield relatively quickly, then, you know, Layla can't get those Night Stars anymore. Therefore, she can't get that energy and she can't get that extra cryo application. So she'll do good for the most part. And again, she'll, like, she'll probably even do fine in Spiral Abyss, but it's definitely going to be a struggle. But yeah, Layla does have a really beefy shield that's going to definitely keep you alive through most of the game. And with that being said, that is going to be a wrap for this guide. Hopefully this helps you get your Layla started on the right track when, you're, when you decide to build her. If you have any questions or if you feel like I missed something when talking about Layla's kit, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to try to answer you. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'm going to make some more uh, in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next video.